In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure Telnet and SSH access to your Cisco iOS device. Um, why would we do this? Uh, it, so you can gain remote access to the device when you're not on site. Um, when you're on site, even, um, you can get remote access to it so you don't have to physically console into it. Um, before we configure SSH though, there's one thing you need to check and that's whether you're running a K9 image, K9 software on your device. And you can easily check that by going to enable mode and doing a show version. At the top you'll see what, what software is loaded on your device at the moment and if you've got the K9 there that means you've got the ability to, to generate crypto keys, um, a pair of private, public and private keys. Okay, so once you've verified that, we will continue to configure Telnet first. Um, and by default, ten, Telnet is turned on, but you need to configure a password on the VTY lines or channels. Um, on some devices, you've got five VTY channels, and others you've got up to 16, I believe. Um, now, from a security standpoint, you don't want all the VTY lines to be open. You want, uh, it depends on how many people you think might need concurrent connections to the router because each channel allows one connection to the router, simultaneous connection to the router. Um, so at most, I'd say you, you'd only ever need two. Um, so the way you configure that is line VTY zero, one. So you've got channel zero and up to one, so two. You can do on this particular router, I've got an 800 series router, you can do up to four. I'll just quickly show you, you can type zero, oh, sorry, five, including the zero line. Um, so if we and then we can just say no login, that means that no one can log in with those lines and then we go to VTY line. What we're going to want to say is login local, and what that's going to do is that's going to look to the local username database on the router or the iOS device itself to authenticate users. At the moment, I've got nothing configured, so I'm just going to go ahead and configure a user quickly. Um, with privilege fifth, level 15, which is the top level privilege, they can access everything. And you can either do a password or secret here. And I'm just going to add me. Okay, and then I'm going to set an enable uh, mode. Some device, some platforms require enable mode, others don't. It's, I don't know whether it's between iOS 12 or 15. I'm not too sure on that, but it's worth setting one anyway. <coughs> um, Okay, so we can now test that. Um, I've just set up a basic setup here, connected via IP. And there we go, we get a prompt for our Telnet session. So, so I'm now at enable mode, so I didn't require the enable password. So I'm using Putty, um, well more specifically Super Putty, which is a Telnet and SSH client, um, which you can also use it for serial connections as well. You can go to um, Google and just type Putty. It's the first result that comes up and uh, just download Putty or you can download Super Putty. It requires a little bit more configuration. It's not too difficult, but it allows you to run multiple sessions in one window. Yeah, so I haven't got it on my computer, um, but the normal Putty is quite frustrating because when you, if you type the password wrong too many times or um, you enter the wrong IP, you have to go through it and load it up again. With Super Putty, the window is always open, you can just run new tabs, so it's quite handy. Um, okay, so let's go in and configure SSH now. So if we go to um, global configuration mode, first what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a public and private key pair. And what, how we do that is crypto key generate, RSA, and we say modulus is 1024, and we're going to give it so the label command means we're going to give it a name. So let me just quickly run through this whole statement. So crypto is obviously a crypto function, security uh, generating keys. Key, pretty straightforward. Generate, obviously generate the key. And we're gonna use RSA. I think there's only two options you can do. If we go back, you can use a slightly older one. No, there's only one. So RSA keys, and the modulus means the size of the keys, the how many, you know, the, the the bit encryption, how many bits is going to use to encrypt the the, uh, the keys, so 1024, and obviously the higher you go, the more processing powers that was, is required, so, but generally 1024 is, is what I use, um, 
You don't want to go less because it has been proven um, that RSA keys have been broken. So depending on you know how security strict, how how your regulations and your company um, moderate you, or how you should how you should set up this on your router or switch, go go with as high as you can. Obviously, you've got to, if you've got a more powerful router, go higher to two two o four eight um, or higher. So the next one is label, which is going to call, which we're going to give a name to the SSH key pair, um, so for referencing later, and we're just going to call it SSH. Okay, so now we should see that SSH becomes enabled. Oh, what we won't do actually because we're Telnet. So one important thing when you're Telnet is you don't get the syslog um, messages pop up. So the command for that is terminal monitor or term. Or we have to do that from enable mode. Turn on. So we now should get unless we have to turn logging. You might also have to turn logging on. I think in iOS 15 you have to turn logging on, and you have to say logging console level seven. So we should get yeah. So now see you, we're getting the syslog messages. Syslog at level five config change. Blah 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 blah. Okay. So. If we go to and we say IP SSH, and we've got a few we've got a few commands here, as you can see. So we can, what we're after is we want to give it. We want to specify an RSA key pair. So if we go RSA key pair name, and the word, the string of letters that we gave the name, which was if you remember is SSH. So now. SSH will be disabled and enabled. Um, it's not enabled by default. What I what I should have done is gone to the uh, the uh, serial line and done this. When you generate the keys, SSH is then enabled. Um, now on some some platforms where you've got multiple crypto keys, um, it's worth labeling the key pair that you're using for SSH. So just so you know, um, and for anyone else who you know comes in, in the future and looks at your configuration, they know that that key pair is for SSH. So it's just handy like that, and it's just nice to do. Okay, so if we go back to the IP SSH commands, and we can see we can specify a version, we can specify um, the source interface of which um, connections are allowed. So you can allow it only on your inside interface if you wanted to. And you can change the port of SSH. So by default, it uses port 22. Um, you can do that, you can do logging, you can send logs um, to the syslog or the buffer on the router. And you can see there's a few other commands here that we're not going to look at today. So now if we go back to our line VTY, before actually before we do that, what I wanted to show you is that by default the VTY lines allow any sort of connection. So you can either specify only allow Telnet or only allow SSH. Um, but if I show you the SSH connection. So what you can, what you'll get is you'll get uh, when you're using Passy, you'll get this message, and it's just saying, "Do you want to accept the public key um, from the router?" And you just say yes. So uh, if we now log on as normal, so as we can see, SSH, you don't need any more configuration than that. The VT VTY lines will automatically accept SSH connections. But if we now go to the VTY lines and we say we can say the command is transport input and there you can see we've got a few options we've got all protocols so by default that's what it is we can say none so there's no really point of that because if you've got two VTY lines and you're not allowing Telnet or SSH you know there's, there's no point of, of saying the command um, unless you're, you just want to get rid of the configuration in there already <coughs> and then you've got SSH so only allow exclusively allow SSH, nothing else. And then you can say SSH then Telnet. But that's the same as saying all. Um, or you can say Telnet by itself and it will only allow Telnet connections. The other thing you can do is you can uh, apply an access list using the access class command and then you reference your access list, whatever number it is, and inwards. You want to filter inwards. Um, and then don't worry about VRF also. So basically you can create an access list, you can say that um, a standard access list, you can just list the source addresses that you want to allow um, and that will only allow those source, those source addresses 
to the VTY lines. And from a security standpoint, it's obviously very good because you don't want anyone having access to the VTY lines. And if you, if we have a look at some more commands on the VTY lines, we can specify uh, banners for when the users log in. So exec banner. We can say use the uh, execute the. You know when you uh, uh, let me show you. I think it's banner exec. So this banner that you hear that you define, you can say uh, authorized users. Ooh, can't spell today. Users only. And that banner will show up when the user logged in through those VTY lines. We can also specify a session timeout, and I, I think this is a, a mandatory thing. Mandatory thing that you should do uh, when configuring remote access to any device. Um, if your administrators uh, step away from their PC for five to ten minutes, by default the sessions stay open. Um, I think there is a global timeout that uh, occurs, but. It's always good to explicitly say session timeout, five or 10 minutes or however, however long you want it to be. Just from a security standpoint, obviously you don't want someone else to jump on their computer and get onto your router or switch or whatever device it is. Um, and that's about it. That's, you know, it's obviously very simple setup. There's nothing too complicated about it. If you don't want to use the local database, the username database on the router, oh, oh, sorry, or the device, you can just say password and just set a password for the for the line, so it will use that password. It won't ask you for a username when you log in through your Telnet or SSH client. So I hope this has been informative, and if you've got any questions or think I should expand on anything, just obviously let me know in the comments.